Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to show you an NAN workflow that's going to help you create a RAG ready knowledge base based on all of your historical customer support tickets. Now, before I get into the workflow, I actually want to speak about one of the biggest challenges that I'm finding um, working with different customer support teams today. Because I'm working with customer support teams that are uh, SMBs that might have 50, 100 employees to then enterprise that might have 500, 1,000 employees. And this issue is actually consistent across both sets of different businesses. It doesn't matter what size, this issue is like, it's there. And actually the issue is, uh, these teams wanna introduce AI into the workflows. So one of the biggest use cases for customer support specifically is, hey, I wanna get an AI agent that plugs into Zendesk and it can actually respond to tickets. It can be a co-pilot for my, uh, my actual human customer support team, make them work a little bit faster, more efficiently, give them access to knowledge uh, in a super easy and convenient way. Uh, but the difficulty is, uh, how do I actually get access to my knowledge and how do I connect that knowledge into an AI, right? How does that whole process look? So in this video, I actually wanna solve this specific challenge, right? Because how businesses have built their knowledge is um, across the years of actually growing the business, all the knowledge is dispersed. It can be in articles, it can be in videos, it can be in Slack comments, it can be in technical expertise of specific people, right? You might have an internal knowledge base, an external knowledge base, you might be using ClickUp, you might have used different tools across the years, and as you transition from tool to tool, all that information is lost and it's here and it's there. It's very difficult to actually capture all of your company's knowledge and effectively use it with AI, right? And all of this content was made for human consumption. Like when you're a human, you can go into the article, you can click the hyperlink into the video, you can quickly go into Slack and ask someone a question. You can tap your um, technical expert on the shoulder and just get the uh, information from them as well. But as an AI, you, you actually can't do this. And uh, the interesting thing is there's actually a lot of AI tools out there that actually try and bridge this gap, that try and go to these, um, that try and integrate between all these different systems and tools and places to synthesize the information for you so that you can actually um, capture it and then you can query it for your human agents. Like they can actually go into this tool and like ask questions and get responses back. And that's cool, right? But this tool itself, like how do you access that? How do you bring that into the AI? Um, and one thing, another thing that I'm actually finding, especially with enterprise, is they want this personalized access. They don't want to have to use this tool and this tool and this tool, and then it's going to be like 50 bucks per, per person per month. And at enterprise, when you have 500 staff, that cost does add up. So they want to liberate the knowledge and have it accessible from within their own environment. So to help you understand why this happens, like why the knowledge is dispersed in so many places, I got a very basic um, graph of a company's growth across multiple years, right across X years. When a company first starts out, there's one person running it, like a founder, for example. And this person manages all the customer support tickets, does all the sourcing, does all the product support, does all the selling, marketing, everything, right? This person knows all the information. As the company grows and you start hiring more people, at this stage, you have to start sharing that information with different people on your team. It might be that you have like daily chats or weekly chats or that people are asking you questions directly. Maybe you're working in a workshop and then you create a, um, a process on a piece of paper and you leave it near the bench and people actually follow that process. And as you keep growing and growing, you start um, teaching people these new things. Maybe um, you teach half of your knowledge to another person and then you tell them, hey, create some processes or create some knowledge resources. So they might create articles. They might put posts up in some internal databases. Um, there might be like, this is ac actually the point where this, like the, all the knowledge is dispersed and it proliferates in so many different places is as you're growing. So it's no wonder that as you grow, right, and you're focusing on sales, on marketing, um, you're not so focused on like the structure of knowledge because things just seem to work. But if you're in a big business, right, one thing you start to like realize is uh, communication is super important and actually having access to this knowledge is also super important. So th this is what happens, right? Across like many years of growth and you get more and more people, the knowledge has to go from one person and essentially into a system. And in that, in that space, you start using different tools and you start putting knowledge everywhere. So then the question that we're at today is, okay, if you've not, like, if you've got lots of different knowledge resources, knowledge resource one, two, and N, right? Like you have a, a bunch of different places where you might be looking for knowledge. You might use ClickUp, you might have Slack comments, you might have a technical person on your team, internal knowledge base, external knowledge base, videos that you've made, um, all this stuff. How do you actually get it? And where's the integration point where you can capture all this knowledge? And again, it's like in different places and in different mediums. It could be videos, it could be text space, it could be GIFs, it could be images. How do you get that? And how do you access that knowledge? Like, how do you synthesize it? it this is extremely difficult, right? And there's a, a, there's a couple different ways that you can do this, but the simplest and easiest is this specific workflow that I'm gonna show you today. And the idea behind the workflow is that at the intersection of all these knowledge sources is your customer support agent, 
when they're answering customer support tickets, they've got to go into ClickUp. They've got to ask you questions in Slack. They've got to tap you on the shoulder. They've got to go into the articles in your support center. They've got to synthesize all this information in order to solve that ticket. And then when they do, that information is that collective information is now located within your customer support ticket. So this idea is very simple, but very powerful. So what we're doing in NAN is we're grabbing all the customer support tickets from Zendesk or you know insert your own ticketing tool. We're grabbing those tickets. We're taking all the comments on the ticket from customers and from agents. We're plugging it into an FAQ generator agent, which is gonna synthesize the entire ticket. And then we take this information, the question and answer pair and put it into a Google sheet. And actually at this stage, I highly recommend getting a, uh, like one of your best agents to go through the information in your Google Sheets. So like go through each FAQ and then basically approve or deny them. So this is your final human in the loop check to make sure that the information you're creating is correct. Because, okay, even though your agents are smart and they have all the resources, people are human, right? And they might get things wrong. You might have had poor training at some stages. It is what it is. And the person that's responding to the ticket is maybe going to give them the wrong answer. So you do want one person in charge to actually review all this information. Like the AI won't get it wrong, but the person from the ticket might have gotten it wrong. Um, review, review the information and then approve it. And then you can actually take all this and you can put it into your RAG database. Now there's actually a couple different processes that I run with uh, my customer support clients in terms of how to set up the knowledge base, how to actually tag tickets and how to actually tag the FAQ articles so that you can create multi-agent teams that have all separate RAG pipelines or different you know, ways of generating responses to tickets. Um, in this video, I'm gonna keep it super, super simple. So this is the workflow that we're working with. In the first part of the workflow, we're actually going to Zendesk and we're pulling out all the customer support tickets we're then creating a, an output, which is a bunch of uh, objects where each object is a customer support ticket. The main thing we want is a ticket ID. Because once you have the ticket ID, you can run API calls to basically um, do things on a ticket, like create a response, create an internal note, add some tags, or you can pull information from that ticket. Like you can read the uh, ticket subject, you can read the ticket comments, the internal notes. So you can actually just do a lot by having the ticket ID uh, itself. And then we're iterating through each of those ticket IDs and then running this second workflow. The second workflow takes that ticket ID and now extracts all the comments on a ticket. And then it turns it into a simple string that we can insert into this AI agent. I'm gonna dig into this in just a second. The AI agent reads the entire ticket and it's been prompted up to actually generate a question and answer pair that we can put it into a RAG database. And we've prompted the agent up to actually add that in a RAG ready format. And then finally, we're adding the information into a Google Sheet. So let me run this once just to show you how this works. You can see over here, I have an empty Google Sheet ready to accept some information. So it's a ticket ID, the question and the answer generated by the AI agent. Okay, so let's give this workflow a run. So I'm gonna hit test workflow. And over here, we're basically pulling out all those customer support tickets. We created the uh, objects of all the tickets. And we then took the comments from the ticket, we put it into the AI agent, and then we added it to the Google Sheet. So that was actually super fast. And we can see over here, we have the ticket ID, we have the overall question that the customer was asking, and then we have the answer that would have, uh, or the generated AI answer that would have actually answered that question for the customer. So let's say we added this to our knowledge, um, like our, our, our RAG um, pipeline, we actually would have been able to respond to this ticket immediately by showing them this answer. All right, so what you would actually do from here is take this node and put it into the loop over. So now when you run this system, you're actually gonna get all the ticket IDs and you're gonna loop over each ticket ID, generate the FAQ and add it into the Google Sheet. So we've just got the first one, we're now working on the second one. And now if you had 1,000, 10,000, 50,000 tickets, like depending on the actual uh, sample you wanna work with, um, you'd be able to generate the FAQs for all of your tickets. And over in the Google Sheet, you can see here that we're actually going one by one through all the tickets. Um, we're generating the question and the answer pair and then we're just adding them here. So you can see it'd be super easy to add one more column here and just to say, you know, approved question mark and then have that human go through and say yes, no, yes, no. Um, and then even for the no's, you might have another column here that says like, what's the correct answer? Um, and this is like the most effective way that you can build this knowledge base for yourself based on historical tickets, um, which have already aggregated all of your different um, knowledge sources into one place. So this is, yeah, this is super, super cool. All right, and to explain this workflow, so the first node that we have is this uh, set fields node. Now, what we're doing here is we're setting the uh, email associated to our Zendesk account, the API key, which you have to generate in Zendesk, and then the domain name of your Zendesk account as well. And this information is then gonna be placed into the HTTP, like the API call that's used for Zendesk to actually like get all the ticket information um, and do all that kind of stuff. So we set it here to make it super easy. You just have to input your information here, here, and here. And then if we just zoom out, the um, the next thing we're doing is going into this code block and this code block is taking our email and API key and it's creating a base64 encoded credential string. So this is where that you have to authenticate your Zendesk API calls. This is the actual format, email forward slash token, uh, and then your API key. 
and then you turn it into a base64 format, and then your actual auth header is basic and that encoded variable. So this is how you do all your Zendesk API calls. Super, super easy. Um, and the reason we also add our domain name into that set fields block is because we plug it directly into the HTTP call. So you don't have to do anything else aside from just setting your values uh, into here and then actually creating your Google Sheet as well. Um, because now this, uh, this node and this node is completely taken care of based on those input variables. So we're making a GET request to Zendesk to the tickets endpoint. And uh, one thing to note is that Zendesk actually only returns 100 uh, ticket IDs for this API call per API call. So that means you have to use pagination to actually iterate through each page. So let's say you had 1,000 tickets in your account. You'd actually have to make this API call and just paginate through each of those 10 pages to return the 1,000 tickets. Um, Going down a little bit more, we have basic headers, we have our authorization and then the credentials that we created in the code node before, and then content type application JSON. So this workflow is is basic. It's more so just to conceptually show you how this is done. Um, you can go into chat GPT or into Claude. Um, I would recommend, yeah, Claude for sure. Uh, go in and just say, hey, you need to paginate through your results for, for Zendesk and it will help you modify and add some more code nodes into here. Most likely you just need to loop over these two or yeah, probably these two. Um, nodes until you go through each separate page and then you generate all of your ticket IDs into objects. Um, but once you're done here, you just basically plug into this loop over item and the loop over item is just going over each of those ticket IDs. Now in this API call, it's very similar to the previous one. Um, but the main thing we're doing here, uh, oh yeah, I just didn't put my, um, my placeholder value here, but it's the same, same. The thing that we're doing now is we're making the same, um, the API call to a similar endpoint. It's still to the tickets endpoint, but it's to the forward slash comments. So now we're going to return all the comments on the ticket from both the customer and the uh, and the human agent that we had responding. Same thing as before, our authorization and then the content type. And now uh, let me just run this so we can get some information into here. So when we return this data, um, this is the format that it's in. Okay, I can't really zoom in too much. Um, but basically there's a lot of ticket information here. And sometimes the ticket information is like internal notes that you're writing to different team members that are going onto the ticket. Um, so what I've just done here, in the next step I use a code node to just go through this ticket data and just pull out the ticket subject and then the, the comments, the public comments from the customer and the public comments from your agent and leave all the internal notes just completely excluded. So this code node if I run this as well, it's going to take this, uh, the response from the previous API call, and it's going to convert it into something like this. So we have this variable called ticket conversation that has the ticket subject, the actual customer, and then the agent messages, and it's all tagged by customer, agent, and then um, ticket subject. So this information has to be in a string format, and we pass that directly into this AI agent. So we, like, we can't actually give a JSON value into this um, agent, we have to do it as a string. So we just you do a user prompt as ticket details. Here's all the like here's the actual information of the ticket. Um, in some cases, it'll be much longer than this. Um, if it is much longer than this, then you might actually have to just chop it up because there might be a token input for depending which model you're using. Um, but so far, I found that it works uh, for all the tickets I've been working with. And then our prompt to go into this. Um, it, this is a very basic prompt. I always love to do role and context. Context is the most important. But all I'm doing here is basically saying, hey. You're, uh, you know, you work for Bart's camping store. It's good to give context of what your store is, what it does, what products you sell. Um, but at a high level, your job is to create um, FAQs based off historical tickets. Um, so they're ready for a RAG database. Like that's the end goal of what you're doing here. It's not just to create a generic question and answer pairing. It's to make it RAG ready. So the model is going to know exactly what that means and how to do that. Um, I've got some information over here to kind of help it be prompted a little bit more. The key stuff that I do want to maintain is if there's any links to images, to videos, to articles, keep them in a response because that's still synthesized enough. We don't actually have to access those articles. We just know we need to reference them for specific questions and that's enough for me. So I'm just going to zoom out. And then I have the uh, output, which is a question and answer uh, pair in a JSON output. And then I have um, basically just an example here uh, where the answer includes a link to a YouTube and then um, to some support documentation. The output is going to be in markdown format, which is easily readable by the uh, AI. So when it actually wants to reproduce this, like when it's in a RAG database and then we want to um, generate a response to a customer, we actually see that hyperlink and we can plug that right back into the response for the agent that actually responds to tickets. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, this, this agent is, it's very effective. You can prompt it up definitely to make it a little bit better. Um, and if you're running this system on like tens of thousands of tickets, I would definitely isolate a specific use case um, or a specific uh, contact reason that you have and maybe try it on a hundred tickets first. 
see what happens, optimize your prompt, try it on another 100 tickets, optimize the prompt before you go full scale on all of your tickets. The um, chat model that we're using is just GPT-40, so nothing too, nothing too crazy. Um, and then we have the structured output parser, which is just making sure we get the output consistent with what we're expecting. So question and then answer where both of these are strings. And then finally, in our Google Sheets step, we're just uh, taking all that information. So we're pulling in the ticket ID from that loop variable, uh, from that loop module, because um, that's the ticket ID of this specific run. And then we're plugging in the question and the answer from the previous AI step. So it's actually, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, but it solves a very powerful, uh, you know, it, it's, it solves a very difficult question for a lot of businesses. And again, like you might have knowledge in so many different places, but your agents have to synthesize that knowledge and apply it into a ticket, which is one location. So all we're doing here is accessing that one location, pulling out the information that's already in there, and then using that to create our knowledge base. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're a business owner, be it an SMB or an enterprise, and you're using Zendesk and you want someone to just understand how customer support works to come in and help you automate some of these things and solve some of these challenges, um, I actually ran a customer support team for five years for my e-commerce store. And um, I did everything from building out processes to hire the team, to scale the team. I built out processes on how to solve tickets. I know all about the Zendesk API. I'm very technically knowledgeable um, in that space. And as you can see, I'm super interested in AI and automation. So um, you can speak to me as if you're speaking to yourself with that kind of knowledge for customer support. And because I'm working with so many different companies, there's obviously little bits and pieces that I pick up that I'm happy to share with you as well. So if you want someone to come in and actually build this stuff out for you, please get in touch with me. My information will be in the description of this video. Thank you very much and hope you enjoy.